My name is Lainey Skarston. And my name is Kayla Sandos. And this is our business that we call the, the Forever, Forever Friends Cat, cat Cafe, Cafe, where you can copy, chat, and save a cat. And this is our table of contents, where we will go over the business description, our facility, supplies, and equipment, our organizational chart, personnel management, our funding for our business, as well as our budget, our laws, regulations, codes, and our marketing. So this is our summary of our planning process summary page. We're going to identify our concerns. So in this, we are our concern is we are taking animals from a local animal shelter and aiding them and helping them find a forever home, as well as connecting our community, which is Rome County, to um, a type of business that is not already there. We will discuss the ideas and approve business through the county and state. Um, we will confirm the use of the area within the city of Oak Ridge, which is where our business will be located, and continue the use of policies, regulations, and adjust needed due to. This is our business description. Our business is called the Forever Friends Cat Cafe, and obviously our slogan is that you can copy, chat, and, and save, save a cat. cat. Our mission is to collaborate with our community, which is Rome County and the Oak Ridge community through using the Oak Ridge Animal Shelter and local businesses to have a nice cafe where you can get a treat, get a drink, and you can adopt cats through the cafe. And so this is our logo, and it's just hand and cat, because they're friends. Our cafe prides itself in having lots of drinks, lots of food. This is our menu, and as you can see, there's a wide variety of things you can get. There are specialty items, and this is pleasing all of the animal lovers in the area. You can have a nice drink, you can go study, and go to the lounge area where all the cats are, and you can even adopt a cat if you would like. Here are our hours of operations. So we are open Monday through Friday. We keep a consistent schedule of 11 to 5. Sunday, we are closed statistically because there's a lot of church people going around that are at church, and we feel that we won't be as busy due to those statistics. These are our demographics. We like to cater to 18 through ages 8 through 18 through 64. Even though obviously our business is a family friendly environment, and so anybody is allowed to come. If you look at the Oak Ridge population chart, you can see that over half of the Oak Ridge population is within the, that age range of 18 to 64, and so it makes the most sense for us to cater to that demographic. I made a Facebook post on our local communities. Facebook page to ensure that there would be a lot of people near us that would want to come to the business. And so basically I said, hey, there's this business. If it were to happen, would you visit? 75% 75, uh, 75 out of the 302 voters said that they would plan to visit. 23% said that they would not plan to visit. And 2% created their own option on the poll saying that they would like a job at our business. These are some comments that we have put saying that they would love to come. They think it's a great idea. We have people that said they have been to other cat cafes further away and that they would love to have one in our area and in our community. Here's more. And then these are people that voted no, they would not visit. And a lot of that reason is that they have allergies, not that they would not want to come to the cafe. And so a lot of them said that if the cats and the drinks were separated, which they will be in our cafe, they would be willing to get a drink or a treat but they just can't go to the cats because again, they have allergy to cats. So there are over 70 animals in the Oak Ridge Animal Shelter. So our business, our goal is to take the overflow of those animals and bring them into our cafe and help them find a forever home. Um, another big thing is most of the shelters in the Oak Ridge area are actually kill shelters. So once they start overflowing and don't have enough room, they decide that they euthanize the animals, which is what we are trying to prevent as well. For our facility, we are located right in the brink of that Harriman Oak Ridge area, but it is more so in Oak Ridge that we would use full Oak Ridge utilities. We have an open floor plan in our area, and like I said, the cafe is separate from the dining area. And so you can get a drink and you can get a treat, but you do not necessarily have to go and interact with the cats if you would not like to. And that way there's no risk of like a cat here getting in your drink if you were worried about that. However, though, if you wanted to bring your drink or you wanted to bring your treat into the cat area, maybe do some studying, just hang out, you may. Now there's indoor and outdoor seating in our area and it's this nice tiny little plot. It's very cute and there's lots of comfortable interior and so everybody just feels very homey and very comfortable when ordering at the cafe. 
These are some AI generated images that we put to represent kind of the vibe of our cafe. And so this is the exterior. As you can see, we have our branding colors, which are light purple, beige, and light brown. And as you can see, this is just that small homey kind of feel, as well as the interior, which again has that comfortable seating and not pictured is the cafe that'll be separate. For our utilities, we use internet, electricity, water, plumbing, waste bins, and this is all through Oak Ridge, like I said earlier. And so this is just their contact information for when we needed those things. So here are our emergency procedures. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, they require us to do these things in order for our business to run and own our own business. So we have to comply with emergency action, identifying and addressing these potential hazards that may pop up. We also have to implement safety measures. Uh, we always get regular, regular inspections. So it's like once a year they'll come in and they'll check everything, make sure everything's in, within compliance. We provide training for the equipment so all of our employees will be trained regularly. New employees, they tr get trained. We also have to train for possible workplace hazards. And we have to maintain an accurate and precise record of workplace, workplace injuries, illnesses, and fatalities. For our action plan, this is always going to be set in stone and there will be a copy of it in the cafe for any employees, managers, customers to look over and witness. This is our emergency contact in case anybody were to need it. It has our name, address, title, cell, cell phone number, email, anything you would need in case of an emergency to contact the cafe, as well as our systems for alertness and trial by situation. And so that's just saying, what kind of alerts are we gonna have? Which we would have verbal announcements, recorded announcements, alarm sounds, and then what would happen in case of each situation. And so if a fire were to happen, what would happen, like what alarm would go out, if you know what I mean. For our policies, every employee and customer has to evacuate in all emergencies unless it's a hurricane, tornado, or select case of workplace violence or civil dispute. In the case of a hurricane, everybody would immediately get to the nearest counter, the nearest hood, the nearest table, and hide under it. And then for a tornado, you would go to the nearest closet or bathroom or small room, shut the door, hide in there until deemed safe to go. Workplace owners and the managers have the right to decide whether a civil dispute or some kind of interaction violence in the workplace is enough to evacuate. And if they say so, then everybody were to evacuate immediately. If not, then you would stay in the cafe until the, pro the problem is resolved. If every, anybody who evacuates is to evacuate to the next door business when it comes to employees and customers are also welcome to evacuate that way as well, but we can't force them to go to the next door business. And as long as that business is not being affected by the emergency, that is always where we will report to. This is our exit route. And so this will also be stored for the employees at all times to see, as well as exit signs conveniently marked throughout the building. So that way anybody can always know where they would exit in case of an emergency. So this is the facility maintenance plan. So according to GAAP, we have to uh, re record have record of our maintenance um, expenses and they have to be on our financial statements in like the period that they occurred. So that would be like a quarter one expense or a quarter three expense and so on. So we use TriStar Lawn Maintenance. It is for grounds maintenance for our store. There's their phone number and their address. Uh, we also use Service Sewer and they provide our plumbing and janitorial services and there is our their phone number and address provided. For our supplies, these are the suppliers that we used. Again, it's all from either the Oak Ridge area or just the Eastern Tennessee area. And so obviously we get all of the animals and the cats from the Oak Ridge Animal Shelter and the Oak Ridge Humane Society. And there's their contact information. We get all of the equipment needed from the cafe at this place called Katam Restaurant Supply. And that's down in Kodak, Tennessee. And GFS, Gordon Food Service Store, is where we'll give us our disposables, like our plates, our napkins, our cups, etc. And again, all of that contact information is there as well as the address in case we would ever need it. 
for our supply inventory, these are the exact prices of everything we would need to start the business because this is our one-time cost. And then these are our recurring costs. And so these might multiply over time. For repair and maintenance, we use mid-tent equipment repair. It's down in Crossville, again, super close, and that will manage our equipment. And we allot a $400 budget every month in case of some kind of damage or some kind of repair that's needed. And if that $400 isn't used or the whole $400 isn't used, that stacks up. And so that budget will only grow. And so say something big were to happen, we would still have the amount of money we needed to repair the equipment. So this is a chart of all of our positions, job titles, like requirements that they need for the position, characteristics, and so on. So we have a floor staff, kitchen staff, we have a floor management, adoption management, and we have the owners and the general management. So we need about six people total for our floor staff, um, four people for our kitchen area, um, for each of our management positions, other than the general management, we have one person for that position. And then as me and Lainey are already the owners, those positions are already taken by us. And so here we have our uh, job tasks for our floor staff and everything. So like being a part of the floor staff, you are to be giving like the guests like the best experience possible. So you're making their drinks, you are um, communicating with them, you're communicating with like the other staff that's on the floor. Same with the kitchen, you're communicating reverse, you're going and talking to your floor staff, making sure there's nothing missing. Uh, you keep the business flow going. Okay, so being a part of like the, as our floor management, you are the star of the show. You keep the business flow going. So if you don't have enough people in your kitchen area, you are to take that spot until you can call someone in. You are responsible for making sure employees are in their spots, making floor plans. You are also responsible for keeping up with the business flow and making sure all, their, all your employees are doing the task before they leave. Adoption management, you guys are over response, uh, you guys are over taking care of like our sweet furry friends. You are to clean like litter boxes, uh, interview adopters, animal records, and making sure that like everything's up to date with our vet. And since the owners and general manager positions are already taken, our responsibilities are to maintain the business, make sure all employee manager schedules are done, we are to correct payroll, inventory, and we also are the ones that oversee the write-up and termination process. For our personal management, these are the things that you would need to do to be part of our team, and so obviously you have to submit an application, and then when the manager, which would be Kayla or I at this point, when we accept your application, you come in for an interview, you have to have your driver's license, some kind of form of ID, so social security and your bank information. And then once your interview is over, we will contact you if you're a good fit and you can come back and work for us. These are our hourly and salary, or hourly and yearly salaries for each position. And as a worker for our business, for every year of working with us, you get a week of paid vacation as well as workman's comp in case you get hurt on the job. For recruitment and retention, we fall, like we dedicate ourselves to making sure the workplace is a positive environment at the Forever Friends Cafe. So you are always you are always getting help from somebody. So you're going to have some clear, definitive roles. You're always knowing what you're doing. There's never room for confusion. You have a support team from the managers, the owners, your other coworkers, and you're always aided through the recruitment process as well as just working at our store. You get a compensation package that has health insurance, a 401 401- we have a compensation package that includes health insurance, a 401k plan, employee discounts, lots of good pay. And after a year of employment, obviously you get that week of paid vacation and the positive work environment is super inclusive. It's caring, it's unique. And when we are trying to recruit an employee, all of the staff will be involved to see if they, if we blend together, if everything's a good fit, but we also have to have a need to recruit. And so we have to have a need for another employee. If you were to resign or to get fired, you would be notified of that beforehand, but you would also know what is going to happen, whether you're going to get, whether you're going to resign or fired, whatever, you would know what to do. 
And so you're going to be trained on those policies and you will be noted as resigned by reporting with your two weeks notice. If you do not give us our, your two weeks notice, you are on risk for termination depending on if you contact us in a good amount of time. Term, termination can happen with a warning, without a warning, but obviously you will know that you will be terminated and we will give references whether you're laid off or you're resigning or whatever. These are the forms you'd use for when you're hired, when you're getting hired, if you were to get terminated and if you were to resign, these are the forms you'd use as well as our evaluation form. Um, so this is an example of our evaluation form. So every employee is eligible for a um, performance review after six months from their hire date. And based on their score, you can get a 25 to 50 cent raise based on your score and how well you performed. To fund our business, this is our total monthly and startup costs. And all of these numbers are taken from the numbers I put in earlier for our startup budget. And so our total monthly cost is gonna to look to be around $37,000 while our startup cost is around $155,000 to secure this funding and to make sure we have enough money to cover this cost. We're gonna have social media ads, lots of holiday events. We're gonna get that profit from adoptions that we will always put back into the veterinary expenses. We have merchandise sales that we will get profit from as well and then profit from the cafe sales, of course, which will be a big chunk of what our money we get. For our budget, we, this is for the first year of business, which would be 2025 for us. And our startup costs, we have our monthly cost with a times the 12 times in the month, which would give our total amount spent as around $600,000, but then we get a total sales profit from 600, at $678,000, meaning that we would totally earn around $144,000 for our business. But as the years go on, we expect to at least get 10% more money each year since the business will be expanding and growing and more people will know about it. This is our tax form and we will accept payment in cash, credit card, debit card, as well as PayPal. And then as time goes on, if we feel the need to have more peer-to-peer -peer payment platforms like Venmo or Cash App, we will add them depending on the community's want. So um, per the state of uh, Tennessee law, we are to provide an electronic company, a copy of our floor plan showing like all of our equipment, where it's located, and it, that it's labeled. Uh, we also have to have business, a business license or registration with the Tennessee State Department of Revenue as well as being registered with the Tennessee Department of Revenue. So these are our fire codes. We all have to follow all of these. So this goes into like our international building code, fuel and gas code, mechanical code, plumbing code, and our fire code. All of these covered are under OSHA standards. So these are the big things that the inspectors will look for as they come in. Um, our building is in a C1 zoning district. So this is meant to serve like the shopping needs, restaurants, and um, a variety of stores, hair salons, drug stores, and small clothing stores, so on. Um, we also use the uh, 5812 zoning code for establishments like ours. These um, type of establishments, they um, provide a service in, such as food, and it is used for immediate consumption. Um, these are our building codes requ and requirements. So we have to file a permission application when managing our equipment. So we have to have like, documentation of all of our equipment. We have to submit our plans to the Tennessee Department of Health when we are changing our floor plan, doing construction. Um, we have to, the enterprise must be inspected before filing our permission application. And just all these things are stuff that the state of Tennessee requires us to have. For our business, obviously we use all Oak Ridge utilities and that we also use Tennessee governmental information like the health department, Commerce and Insurance and Safety and Health Administration, and these are just the contact info and the addresses of these places in case we'd ever need them. For training, all floor staff would be, here, you wanna do that? Yeah. yeah. All right, so um, the training required are like, is a training that from like your date of hire to like whatever position you're going to be moving up, the, you go. So all employers have to go under training 
through the day that they're hired as you move up through the business. So like our floor staff will be trained on our POS systems, how to do drinks, how to give customers like the best guest experience. The kitchen staff will be trained on food handling, the procedures in the kitchen area, so on, as well as inputting like waste, so that way us general managers know what we need to buy on inventory. Um, the floor managers will be trained in food safety that is required by the state of Tennessee. They are trained in both areas of service, so they are trained in the kitchen and in the service area itself. They have to know how to enter deposits um, into the computer, food inventory skims, and drawer counts at the end of each shift. Adoption managers, they um, are trained in advertising for adoptions, as well as procedures concerning the care of the animals. Now, we take marketing very seriously in our business because we believe that that is a really big way for us to earn profit, and so this is our marketing plan. For marketing, we are gonna use very consistent branding always and forever. We have merchandise for sale, project, or product packaging, we have social media pages as well as ads on those pages, physical flyers and holiday celebrations and also a national cat day celebration and an opening ceremony. So this is our branding and we wanna keep this very consistent in everything we do. And so this is our logo, colors, fonts, and obviously our slogan, which is copy, chat, and, and save, save a cat. cat. And so obviously we have those colors that I said earlier, we have the light blue or the light purple, we have the light brown and the beige. Those we use those in everything. We have these two fonts, Sherry Light and Alice. Alice is the font that we've used on this entire slideshow and Sherry Light is that font in our logo, which we will place wherever we can, as much as we can, always. At the cafe, you can either get you know, a to-go order or you can dine in. While you, when you dine in, you can use these mugs which have our logo on them. They are for sale and so if you would like to buy one, you could, but you would also have them always and so our logo is always up and it's always branded and then these are all to-go cups and to-go bags disposable bags and cups that would have our logo on them as well and so say you were to go somewhere our logo is still being networked to more people for social media we have an instagram page which is linked to a facebook page as well and so we could post on facebook or instagram and it would post on both of them at the same time and so that's two social medias at once we have our location, our slogan, and we have our logo, again, keeping consistent with that branding on our social media page. And then these are some examples of posts that we might post, which again, using those colors, using that branding, keeping everything super consistent, as well as our flyers that, again, colors, branding, we have our fonts, we have an opening day flyer, a general flyer just for anything, and a national cat day celebration flyer that we would put out in local businesses, we put them in the Humane Society, the animal shelter, obviously, because those are people who are obviously interested in wanting to adopt. That is where we would put them. Thank you guys for watching our presentation. Um, we are Harriman High School FCCLA, and we presented the Forever Friends Cat Cafe. And we hope that you will copy, chat, chat and, and save, save a cat. cat. And here is our work sessions. Do you have any questions for us? So I do have a question. Do you guys have policies set in place if anything bad was to happen to a cat? So is what we would do is we would section off the cat area to customers for a certain amount of time, and then we would immediately call our local veterinarian that we use. And until the vet is done with what the, uh, he or she is doing, then we will um, open it up after they leave. Okay, thank you. And uh, building off of what she said, do you have policies for like disasters or like a tornado or a hurricane that would happen for the cats? For the cats? Yeah, like to get the cats out because you guys kept saying the people are going to leave. Well, they're just oh. chilling. Do you have policies for like tornadoes and hurricanes for like to get the cats out? So our business, obviously, we cater to the people as well as the cats. If, if we could grab cats and go, that's the plan. Grab a cat and run. But... The people come first in our business. Okay. All right, so um, closing time, like what happens to the cats whenever you guys close? So part of the reason we have two people on the adoption side of the employees is so we can have two shifts. That way we have like a, a day shift and a night shift. And so while obviously cats can be left alone for a couple hours, we will at least have someone for a good majority of the night to monitor the cats, 
clean up anything if they need to. The cats will always have a place to use the bathroom. They'll always have food, water available. But we always have that employee there as well, just in case anything were to happen. And that way, the cats are always safe. Thank you.